I just remember it was me, my blue bear, and my invisible friend John, and a small suitcase that would move around home to home. It was just always me. Like, that was it. You'd meet a bunch of adults and you know, you'd get to know them, they'd get to know you, and then before you know it, you were back on the road. What I've learned is that life is pain and that we all experience that pain in multiple different ways. I've just been able to use my pain to find purpose and meaning. In fact, I'd be quite scared to find out who I'd be without that pain. So, essentially for anybody that's going through any level of pain, despair, trauma, adversity, I'd say embrace it. Embrace that pain. That pain is necessary for you to grow, because pain is necessary for growth. One wave comes after the other and before you know it there's another wave there. So if you've embraced that first wave then by the time the next wave comes you're already prepared for it. Because you know what that first wave feels like. You know I've made it my life's purpose now to commit myself to those children and young people that are facing those situations that I faced. And I can think of nothing better to do now than to give them everything that I've got. All of my optimistic energy, all of my passion, all of my compassion, all of my unconditional positive regard in the capacity that I have to do that. And that's essentially why children and young people that have experienced trauma and neglect and abuse, they develop armour. And with that armour comes the sword, the shield, the helmet. And that armour can weigh heavy. And so those children and young people are blamed for their behaviours. And they start swinging that sword around, they start to fight. And when they protect themselves with the shield and become defensive, they don't know any other way. You know, for me, this isn't a job, this isn't a place of work that I come to. This isn't something that I switch off from. This isn't a thank God it's Friday role. This is a life's purpose, this is a mission, this is my passion, this is what I'm here to do, this is what I was essentially born to do. And if anybody tells you that they haven't got time, they're lying. You know, if a teacher says they haven't got time, social worker says they haven't got time, parents say they haven't got time. I mean, I've said that before, and I was lying, and they're lying. You see, it's not the time that they haven't got, it's the energy. Everyone's got time, like, time's boundless, it's endless, it, it's every second is every second, isn't it? And, you know, you could spend literally 60 seconds with a child and create them to smile and feel good about themselves within 60 seconds. Whereas we kind of put time on this pedestal as a holy grail of oh my god like I haven't got that well if you haven't got time what have you got so you know when I think back to Dave Eunice Neville Adam Miss Garvey uh, Pat I don't remember conversations I don't remember everything that we did but if you ask me, Stephen, how did those people make you feel, I can tell you, without missing a beat. They made me feel warm. They made me feel wanted, valued, appreciated, seen, heard, worthy and connected. And essentially that's what I'd like to create for all the children and young people that I support today. You know, the one thing that I've always wanted to instill into my children is 
creativity, love, passion. I never wanted to just like be their dad. I guess I was just trying to be somebody that they could depend on.